Hey guys, this is my Sunco 709 AD spot welder. I've done several thousand welds with it so far, and my biggest complaint is how hot the cabling and the welding pens get while you're welding. These are my two welding pens. This was the original one that came with it. Uh, it got so hot that it actually melted um, these terminals loose in here. And I thought I would fix it by putting some JB Weld in there to hold them in place, which of course I lost the spring effect going in and out. Uh, but I didn't think that was such a big deal. I figured I would still be able to put enough pressure down. You see how that ended up. It, it does not work anymore. And uh, I just wasn't getting consistent welds with it. So that ruined that idea. So then I went and purchased a brand new pen and I believe they're about like 40 or 50 bucks. They aren't cheap. And I had the same problem. It's still getting hot. So I thought I'd be creative and I attached these two squirrel cage fans on it. So what's underneath the here is I pushed out these uh, grids that are here, this plastic in between. So the fan's blowing directly in and then it blows both out this way and it blows back this way. And that gets me a few more welds before it gets too hot. But this looks ridiculous the way it's done. And it gets annoying having this transformer on the end to plug in and power the fans. And even with that, it is still getting too hot to where these plastic things melted once again and these tips are loose and they squeeze in like this when you're welding. So it ends up shorting out here and not actually welding the cells. So after watching Average Joe's video recently, where he built a set of spot welding leads, I thought, hey, why not try that on my Sunco? So the way this works is this is your output transformer and there's a lead that goes up to the top in here and this is the front pedal thing. So when you push cells up from the bottom, it flips a switch and then the current flows up these two leads into your front probes and spot weld your battery. There's also the second option of when you plug in the welding pen, which is where these two wires come in down here. These are the two front connectors. In the so the way this works is this is actually one single wire that goes up through here, straight up through here, and up to here. It's one single piece of wire, the same with the other side. So if you look down here where the transformer attaches to those cables, you'll see the output from the transformer is just soldered on, and it's actually not even soldered on very well. It's kind of, it's kind of just tacked on a little bit there. So what I decided I would do is cut these leads here since I don't use this front portion anyway and I'm going to splice directly to these. So if I pull off the spiral wrap here, this is the wiring that's used. It, it's kind of crappy, it just comes apart in chunks like this. Um, it can't be more than number six wiring. So if you squeeze the wire down like this and measure it with the caliper, it measures 4.05 millimeters. Um, that's slightly larger than number six but it's not quite number four. So for the welding tips, I'm going to be using the six gauge solid conductor, um, the same kind that Joe used in his video, 4.13 millimeters. And then for the welding from the spot welder to the, the electrodes, I'm going to be using this. This is four gauge uh, thin stranded welding cable. And if I use the caliper on this, it measures 5.29 millimeters. And the original lead from where the electrode begins uh, back to the end of the cable is roughly 21 inches long. I'm going to be doing mine about 26 or 28 because I want a little bit extra length on it. They definitely aren't perfect, but they'll do. These are my homemade butt splices. Um, they are from quarter inch inside diameter tubing. It's the same tubing that's used in your refrigerator for your ice maker. And they will fit perfectly on the six gauge wire electrodes we just made. Now obviously this is too small for the four gauge wire, uh, but considering we're going to six gauge anyway, I'm just going to use about half of the strands of the four gauge wire. Now this would be a lot easier if I had the proper tool to flare at the end of these connectors to get the leads to slide in, um, but I don't have a flare tool. So I'm just going to do the best I can. You know, that wasn't bad. There's... For crimping these I have the number six dies. Certainly not perfect, but we'll do for testing. <coughs> and there we 
we go. Uh, they actually came out a little better than I was expecting. What I'm gonna do now is remove these two arms here since I don't use them and then just pass it right through the front. And then I'll be able to splice it onto these cables on this side. And to do that, there is two small uh, lock washers. I'm not sure what they're called. They're like the C clamps, lock washers, whatever you call them. Alright, so here's the electrodes. I believe these Phillips screws on the bottom is what holds these wires in. So, loosen them up with a number two Phillips. Oh! That is not what holds them in. And then we'll keep this together just in case we want to install it back in later. And then I'm using the same uh, homemade butt splices as before. These are from 5 8 inch water line. Sorry, these are from 3 8 inch water line. Heat shrink. And for these ones, I'm going to try the 25 dies, but I think they may be a little bit too big. Uh, if they are, we'll slip in a smaller size and then recrimp them afterwards. Yep, that's too loose. Um, so we'll try the 16 dies instead. Much better, that's not coming off. Okay. And there we go. Um, again, having proper butt splices would uh, definitely make this job look better um, and is probably better electrically. But again, just testing at this point and I can always come back and redo it later. If we can slide the heat shrink over that, hopefully. Uh, yeah, just barely. And then we'll put this piece of spiral wrap back on to cover the rest of the cable the way it was when we found it. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with the second lead. And then to keep them from rubbing together on each weld, I'm just going to put a zip tie around. Just like that. Alright, so the way we're going to test this is, I'm going to set the current on 6, and set the pulse on 4, and then put my clamp meter across the original lead, shorting out the two terminals, and make sure it's set to inrush current. And that was 452.8 amps, so I will reset it and then put it on the new leads doing the same thing and there you have 564 amps so that's quite a difference and that's only on six and four now the reason why I'm not turning up the whole way is because I think this clamp meter is limited to 500 amps or so and it read 564 so it must be greater than that but if I put it on the original one, turn the current the whole way up. Oh, there we go. It's showing 605 before I wasn't getting a reading. Alright, so 605 with the current turned the whole way up. 
And there we go. It says, oh well, so it's overloaded. I guess that means... So on 6 it's showing 584 and then again back over here it's showing 490 so that's almost 100 amps difference on the same setting using the new wiring. Okay, we'll try it on the bottom. There's the weld, and it is not coming off. It sounds like it cracked a little bit, but it is stuck on there. There we go. That is making very nice welds. All right, so I got the current on 7.5 and a pulse of 12. This is. So here's the welds from the tests. Um, they look great. I can probably get away with less current or a less pulse. Do one more test on the positive side. Again, they're very consistent. Uh, the electrodes do feel like they're getting a little bit warm, but it's nothing compared to the original Sunco pen. Um, you can see I can't pull them off. Oops. It takes a lot of force to get them off. Actually, it ripped that in half. You can see there's some welding remnants left behind, um, like with this one here. It's actually tearing holes in the spot welds, so, uh, yeah. So yeah, this upgrade is very much worth it in my opinion. I guess time will tell whether there's an improvement with heat or not. Uh, I'll let you know after I do a few packs. If you found this video useful, please click the like and subscribe button below. Thanks for watching.